This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Thursday, January 25th of 2024. So glad you could join us for today's show. In today's episode, I run down some of the latest news headlines, including news from uh, Iowa Renewable Fuels, uh, an update from the American Farm Bureau Federation, as well as a conversation with Iowa Senator Joni Ernst on some recent legislation to protect Iowa's egg farmers. But for right now, let's go ahead and take a look at the ag market. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day in the ag marketplace, we're talking with Robin Schmall of agmarket.net. Uh, Robin, first off, what do we see going on in the grain markets today? Well, generally, we saw some pressure in corn and wheat, uh, I'm sorry, corn and soybeans or the soybean complex. Uh, we saw most of the pressure in soybeans, and then we saw, you know, our pressure into the soybean meal, soybean oil. So everything on that standpoint was lower. Corn, not too bad, a little bit of pressure. Wheat actually was the strong one, struggled for a little bit earlier, but then came back with the uh, Kansas City wheat actually showing the most strength. And part of that, I think, is is stemming from the standpoint of the warmer weather, uh, maybe eliminating most of the snow cover, all the snow cover, maybe in the Plains states, which could expose it to a little bit uh, more risk uh, if we have some kind of a, a weather scenario that could come across there with ice or whatever have you. I mean, it's, it's uh, again, it's that anticipation that may have drove that market higher because we did not see the support coming from export sales today. Uh, corn export sales are at 954,000 metric ton was down 24% from the previous week. Um, now, uh, the estimate was at 988, so we were lower than the estimate. Uh, biggest buyer was Mexico. And you'll see that throughout the report here that Mexico is probably about, is, is the really biggest buyer. Soybeans, we saw export sales of 560,400 metric ton, or 900, I'm sorry, 900 metric ton, down 28% from the previous week. The estimates were 913, so that was that was uh, quite a bit below what anticipated. Now, China was the largest buyer in beans, followed by Mexico as number two. Uh, wheat was 451,400 um, metric ton, down 36% from the previous week. Now, the estimates were 518,000 uh, tons, um, uh, metric tons, Mexico, largest buyer again. Meal was 225,900 metric tons, down 27% from the previous week. Uh, and estimates were 300,000, and Mexico, again, was the largest buyer. So that was um, pretty substantial that they were in, as, as heavy as they are now. Uh, corn sales to Mexico, so far this marketing year, are at a record high 602 million bushels, um, the, the accounts for 47% of U.S. corn sales so far. So uh, these are the sales now. So we, we have a, a very good demand continue to come from Mexico. And I know there had been in the past some issues with GMO corn and all that kind of stuff, but they still um, are working through that. And they've, they're a large, uh, large buyer and, and very important to the uh, U.S. grain farmer. Now, the world's first ethanol plant for jet fuel was formally opened yesterday in Georgia. Uh, so that's pretty significant. There's some push for more of that um, being maybe uh, planned or established because that's going to be a huge market if that's that's uh, that really actually uh, comes on board. So that would be um, the trend that we're looking at and the ethanol there and and now moving over into jet fuel would, ver would be very 
good situation for the U.S. Um, now, Brazil's soybean exports, they're expected to double in June, January to a total of 2.3 million tons compared to last year. And now, ref, now ref, um, finitive commodities out of Brazil uh, actually reduced Brazilian soybean production to 149.3 million tons. 7.7 uh, .7 million tons below USDA's World Agricultural Outlook Board projection of 157. We continue to hear the reduction in projections for Brazil's soybean crop. They're still looking at a large crop, but it's really not having much impact on our market. Uh, you know, soybeans ran into just some buyer resistance today, pushed the market back down again going to have to struggle to regain some of those losses. So um, not a lot of really support coming off of some of our export sales, coming off of some of the other news in the market. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's what drove much of the trading today. And Robin, looking at the other side of the marketplace in the livestock complex, uh, how did those trade today? Well, cattle found their legs today after a kind of a slow start they really started finding some buying interest. Now, yesterday we had some light trade in the cash cattle market of a dollar higher. Uh, really had, didn't do a whole lot more trading there. Was some cash was traded today again at a dollar higher. Now, some of the uh, possibility is, is we could see maybe even $2 higher trade uh, because feedlots are holding out at this point in time. A feeder cattle led the charge today. We saw some of the later contracts up $4 uh, once they started really getting going. So, um, and that's in, in spite of the weakness we've seen in the box beef recently. Now, today at the midday, we were mixed on box beef. Choice was down $1.66, select up 68 cents. Um, but we're seeing a little bit more of the anticipation um, traders buying back into that market because cattle numbers are still tight, but packers are a little bit short bought from the last couple of weeks and they might have to step up a little bit more to finish out the week. Now, beef export sales were at 22,400 metric ton, pretty much on par with the previous week. South Korea was the largest buyer. Cold storage report that was released yesterday afternoon showed fro frozen beef supply down 11% from a year ago. On the hog side, uh, they struggled to find some real good buying interest today. Um, they closed a little bit higher. You should have anticipated there would be more strength based on the strong cash yesterday, cash market yesterday on the national direct a daily report was up $5.76 and cutouts were up 83 cents. That's the largest increase we've seen in the um, cash market for quite some time. Uh, export sales were 24,100 metric ton with Mexico being the largest buyer as far as pork was concerned. Uh, so the, 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 the stronger cash and cutouts that we saw yesterday probably was already factored in with the two days of large movement higher. And that's why we kind of settled down a little bit more on hogs, but there is support under them as well. All right, Robin, lots of great information today. For those of our listeners and our viewers who'd like to get in touch and learn more from the folks at agmarket.net, how can they do that? They can call me directly if they'd like at 877 Two five six three two five three, or go to our website agmarket.net. There's 844 number is listed there, and you can call in, and somebody will be glad to help you. Robin Schmall again, our guest analyst for today's show. Robin, thank you so much for uh, the great market analysis as always, and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. All right, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on the show. That again was Robin Schmall of agmarket.net. We'll take a look at how those numbers close. That's courtesy of the market window at iowaagnet.com. March corn down half a cent at 4.51 and three quarters. March soybeans down 17 and a quarter at 12.23 even. March soybean meal down $5.10 at 3.58.20. March soybean oil down 79 at 46.53. Chicago wheat up one and a half at 6.12 and a quarter. Kansas City hard red wheat up 11 and a quarter at 6.37 even. 
Minneapolis spring wheat up four and a half at 709 even. March oats down one and a quarter at 364 and a half. On the Merck, February live cattle up 237 at 177.72. March feeders up 440 at 238.17. February lean hogs up 40 at 74.30. February pork cutout went unchanged at 87.35. February class 3 milk up 27 cents at 15.85. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, I have some of the latest Iowa Ag News headlines. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Time now to take a look at the latest Iowa Ag News headlines. The American Farm Bureau Federation concluded its 2024 annual convention, setting policy direction for the organization this year. Passing a farm bill this year is the top priority for Farm Bureau members, followed by labor and artificial intelligence data privacy. Delegates voted to create new policy to address the growth of artificial intelligence in agriculture, which has the potential to enhance farming practices and conserve resources. But the AFBF says privacy rights must also be respected. Delegates also voted to stabilize wages for guest workers and revise H-2A and H-2B programs. They reaffirmed their support for increasing reference prices in the farm bill and maintaining a strong crop insurance program including expanding eligibility to ensure more commodities are covered. Additionally, Farm Bureau delegates agreed to say in the rural communications section of the policy book, quote, we support vehicle manufacturers continuing to include AM radio in vehicles. Beyond policy changes, AFBF President Zippy Duval and Vice President Scott Vanderwall were unanimously re-elected for another two-year term. Many Americans rely on eggs and egg products as an affordable, healthy source of protein and nutrients. However, companies that label plant-based products as eggs undermine the integrity of real egg farmers, a vast majority of which are in Iowa, the leading egg production state in the nation. As a result, U.S. Senators Joni Ernst, out of Iowa, of course, and John Fetterman, Democrat from Pennsylvania, introduced the Bipartisan Consistent Egg Labels Act to clear guidelines and create clear guidelines for the Food and Drug Administration to ensure any product labeled as an egg is actually derived from poultry. Senator Ernst said this is similar in principle to the push for proper milk labeling as well. This is an issue when you're walking through the grocery store and you're looking at all of these different products that might come in cartons and they are labeled as eggs or egg substitutes. And if you're a busy mom, you're trying to juggle a, a toddler and a baby as you're doing your grocery shopping, you may not notice that what you're grabbing that says egg on the label is not actually eggs. It might be a product that's derived from mung beans or something like that. So uh, what John Fetterman, who is a Democratic senator from Pennsylvania, and I are doing, we are going back and saying, hey, if you are going to have egg on the label, it needs to be an egg product. So we are pushing for the for new labeling requirements as it concerns eggs. Um, if you are an egg substitute, sorry, can't use egg. Um, but anyway, it's a it's a great effort, and you're right in that we've seen this with milk alternatives as well. And I have yet to see an almond that actually produces milk. Senator Ernst added that the goal isn't to eliminate these substitutes. After all, they are also agricultural products. The effort is just to make sure that people know what exactly they're buying from store shelves. Exactly. And I would just describe this as truth in advertising. Um, so making sure that when people are grabbing that carton off of the shelf at the grocery store, that they know whether they are eating another plant-derived substitute or if it actually is an egg that comes from poultry. So again, it's just truth in advertising. We want people to know and understand what they are buying and what they are consuming. Sustainable aviation fuel could grow into the largest new market ever seen for U.S. farm commodities thanks to the start of production at Lanzajet Freedom Pines Fuels. However, groups in Midwestern states say they could miss out on the opportunity 
without low-carbon ethanol, which requires carbon capture and sequestration. Iowa Renewable Fuels Association Executive Director Monty Shaw says, quote, Today and every day going forward, American farmers and ethanol producers are losing demand until we get carbon capture and sequestration online. Iowa Corn Usage and Production Committee Chair Dan Keitzer added, quote, Lanzajet Freedom Pines fuels will use a variety of low-carbon sustainable ethanol, making this an eye-opening experience to what Iowa corn farmers could expect to be a part of. No Iowa ethanol plant currently has a carbon intensity score low enough to qualify as an SAF feedstock. Only one plant in the U.S. using CCS is currently producing SAF-friendly ethanol. And that's all the time we have for news headlines today, and that brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. Also follow us on social media at Facebook, LinkedIn, X, and TikTok, and find our video content as well as previous episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when those videos go live. Don't forget as well our free twice-daily market podcasts on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network studios in Des Moines, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of Mark Magnuson, Andy Peterson, and Dustin Huffman, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.